You're not gonna believe it. Where the hipsters have headed and foodies are flocking. It's where we found the best brunch cocktail of all time. Boogie Down Craft Brew blew us away and Tostoni Sliders are the talk of the town. Plus, we hit the road for sizzling sausages, garlic butter skirt steak, and the best Brazilian radizio in the tri-state. This looks naughty, people! <laughs> Mommy, when New York starts right now! When my great-grandmother immigrated to New York with her five sons, they moved to the Bronx, as many Italian immigrants did. And while we love Arthur Avenue and how authentic it has remained over the years, the rest of the Bronx? Well, that's a change -in. Some call it the final frontier, the last of the five boroughs to undergo gentrification. And if you can't believe it's gone hipster, well then, you haven't recently been here. But let's start at the beginning of it all. European colonization of the Bronx began in 1639. The Bronx was originally part of Westchester County, but it was ceded to New York County in fragments before it became Bronx County. So why is it called the Bronx? Well, the name comes from the Bronx family, whose Swedish patriarch, Jonas Bronx, came to the area in the early 1600s. The 500 acres they owned north of Manhattan came to be called Bronx land, and the river on which their land lay was called Bronx River. It wasn't until on January 1st, 1898, the Consolidation City of New York was born and included the Bronx as one of the five distinct boroughs. But since then, it has come a long way, baby. If you're a fan of MoMA, then you will certainly want to make the trip up here to the Bronx to check out a true treasure, the Bronx Museum. What began as a small gallery in the county courthouse, just four decades later is considered a world-class institution. The museum focuses on contemporary art and in the past has housed exhibits by painters like Pablo Picasso, Mark Rothko, and Willem de Kooning. Architectural fans may want to come as well to take in the incredible transformation it underwent during a $19 million renovation. They also offer educational programs and through February 14th, you can check out Martin Wong's first full retrospective. But if you want to step back in time, you can visit the Van Cortlandt House Museum, the oldest house in the borough. It was built in the Georgian style by Frederick Van Cortlandt in 1748 for his family. Van Cortlandt died before its completion and the property was inherited by his son, James Van Cortlandt. The Van Cortlandt family was an influential political dynasty from the 17th century Dutch origins of New York through its period as an English colony, then after it became a state and into the 19th century. Van Cortlandt Park in the Bronx derives its name from the family. The town of Cortlandt to the north in Westchester County carries the family name as well. Stephanus Van Cortlandt was the first native-born mayor of New York City, and Jacobos Van Cortlandt's grandson was John Jay, a founding father and first Chief Justice of the United States. Now, when it comes to today's trendiest part of the borough, that will take us to Mott Haven. Between Yankee Stadium and the Harlem River is a true up-and-coming neighborhood. Mott Haven derived its name from Jordan Mott, who built a tremendously successful ironworks beginning in 1828, which continued operations through the beginning of the turn of the century. Then in the early part of the 20th century was noted as a center of piano manufacturing. In 1919, the Bronx was the site of 63 piano factories employing more than 5,000 workers. And one of the hippest residential buildings in Mott Haven is the Clock Tower Building, home of the former Etsy Piano Company factory. But these days, it's where you'll find Charlie's Kitchen and Bar, one of our favorite new finds in all of the five boroughs. The design is sexy, the vibe relaxed, but when you taste the plates coming out of the kitchen, led by chef Joshua Bedford, this is a true culinary destination. But before we get to all of his amazing food creations, grab yourself a bucket of chipotle pork rinds because it's cocktail time. Joshua Aponte will light your fire with the Parker County, perhaps the best brunch cocktail of all time, using chef's signature handcrafted Jacksboro Highway hot sauce. First, two ounces of vodka, chef's hot sauce, salt, lime, muddle. Then in goes the cilantro. Three, two, one. It's gonna be a little hot. Woohoo! That is a party in a cup. <laughs> Woo! 
Back in the kitchen, Chef was busy preparing our feast. Not only do they source locally and go antibiotic and hormone free, but they also garden right on the very own rooftop. First up, oysters kill Patrick, a throwback to the owner's heritage, who is from Australia. What this is, it's oysters, Worcestershire sauce, uh, some applewood bacon from a farm in Vermont, mm -hmm. uh, the Jacksboro Highway hot sauce, and that's it. And that's it, you make it sound so simple. You just throw it in the oven for about five minutes. They are already a little bit spicy because of the sauce, but if you like more heat, there's some fresh horseradish under there. I would go for the lemon. The lemon kind of, it needs it. It's like, it, it brightens needs everything it. up. Yeah. Do you come table side to tell me how to eat when I get here? <laughs> Oysters kill Patrick. Right. Bob's looking on, wondering if we should try them. <laughs> Bob was a vegetarian until he started working on my show. Ah. Welcome to the other side, buddy. Welcome yeah, to the dark welcome side. Welcome to the dark side, pal. <laughs> welcome to the dark side. Three, two, one. Yeah. What the heck was that? That was so good. Right. I have to do my research and do it thoroughly, right, Chef? Correct. Make sure that we're absolutely positively this is one of the most delicious things I've ever served at the Oyster Hole. <laughs> You're in the best city for that. Yeah, I am. Three, two, one. It's confirmed. One of the most delicious things I've ever eaten. All right, next. Here we have our chicken thighs. They, uh, they're rubbed with stuff like smoked paprika, cinnamon, sugar, cumin, and it's a simple, simple flour. It's flour, buttermilk flour, really simple. Here we have some crispy carrots. Carrots? It's kind of a play on the southern tradition of fried chicken and uh, glazed carrots. Instead of glazing them, we're gonna go ahead and fry them, get some cool color, and to add that sweet flavor. What are you dribbling over my fried chicken, Chef? That is a wild clover honey. Wild clover honey? Yeah. You guys keeping bees up on that roof too? <laughs> no, but we do have bee farmers upstate that we do business with. Give it me. I need to get on these crispy carrots with the clover they, honey. They will change your life. They will change my life? Yeah. <laughs> These are big claims, Chef. There's a man standing by his words. Mmm, mmm. And this is your fried chicken. Right. Fried chicken, Charlie's. You try with the hot sauce. Oh, so we're getting directed. It's like shooting with Danielle Balloon. We shot with him and he told me how to eat everything. I like this though. I'll take the advice. You know what you're doing. Of course. It's all based on the sauce, man. It's all, you know, all about it is the sauce. All, it is all about the sauce. I'm gonna have to throw down Joshua later to get that recipe out of him. <laughs> Three, two, one. For brunch, we take the same chicken, we put it on top of a waffle, we cover it with sausage gravy. This is like rubbing all over your body, good people. <laughs> right over here, okay? I can't stop eating this. You know how much I've eaten today. Next came a tuna masala with Jerusalem artichokes, and then, maybe the best thing of all time, Mexican street corn. Charlie style. All right. What are you doing to my corn? <laughs> This is just a crema. It's just a crema. Yeah, if you've ever had Mexican street corn before, normally it's mayonnaise, but we like to take it up a little bit of a notch here. This is the exact same spice rub that we use on the Jacksboro chicken. It's another hot sauce that we make, but you can only get it here in the restaurant at Charlie's. The jalapeno. This is an oil made out of scallions, a garnish with just some pig cilantro leaves. All right. That's our uh, Mexican street corn here at Charlie's. Mexican street in crema. Because I haven't had enough calories tonight, Chef. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> you should move to the Bronx for the street corner alone. Coming up, Boogie Down Brown, my new favorite go to innovative and award winning craft brew. Pizza gets thrown on the grill, doused with vincotto, and we are road tripping in search of the best sangria in the tri state. 